Sarah here from smallbusinesssarah.com and today we're going to talk about Square and QuickBooks Online and the way I like to handle that bookkeeping. If you follow a lot of my videos, you'll know that I often shy away from integrations, but I have actually been very happy with the Square integration in QuickBooks. So we're going to be using just the Square integration with QuickBooks and you can find that in the app section of QuickBooks. I believe it's actually referred to as Connect to Square. So right here you can see the apps that this particular account has connected and Connect to Square is what the app is called. You can see right there in the app section that's where you can see what apps you've connected and you can find other apps if you um, have yet to set up Square, just go to Find Apps and find Search for Connect to Square and set it up that way. So once we've connected Square, our Square account to QuickBooks Online, it's going to appear here. We're in the banking section on the App Transactions tab. That is where all the information from Square is going to come through. The settings that I like for Square, first make sure you select the correct bank account where your Square deposits are going. Second, I do prefer the summary transactions view. The other option is the detail view, but personally, I just think the summary keeps things a little bit cleaner in QuickBooks. You don't have a lot of like, for one craft show that you're attending, you won't have like a whole page of transactions. You'll have like the day's worth of transactions, which I find super helpful. And in this case, we're not um, tracking any items. So for square item, that's the setting we have in place. Customers, just one customer, square customer. And then it assigns all of the different types of square transactions to the products and services location and or accounts in QuickBooks. So those are the settings that we have. The most important one being that summary option. Okay. So let's figure out how we handle this then. I like to make sure I can match up what I see in the app transactions to the bank account before I add anything. So our example is going to be this 1215, 1576 amount. You can view the details. You can see the fees that are deducted. You can see the sales tax that is included. If we come over to our bank transactions, lo and behold, we can see that deposit right here in our bank account. So once I see it on both sides, I know I'm good to go. So I'm gonna come back over here to app transactions and I'm gonna click add. Then when we come over here to bank transactions, you'll see that we have a match. And so all we have to do is hit match. And behind the scenes, the sales are being recorded, the fees are being recorded, and the sales tax is being recorded, which is what we want. It's beautiful. Before I show you what that looks like on the balance sheet and on the profit and loss statement, I wanted to do one more example because most people that set up Square, it's because they're doing in-person shows and sales. And so that often involves collecting cash, not just credit card. So in our example, we have a deposit here on 1126 of 702. If we go back to the square transactions, you'll see that this one is labeled 1116 as other, as opposed to the transactions that are labeled card transactions, which is what we just did. So the other transactions represent cash sales and that's summarized all together in one spot. You can see how it says undeposited cash check. So Square is keeping it separate. They're doing other together as a deposit, which is what, which is perfect. And then they're doing card transactions together. So that makes the depositing and matching of the two within QuickBooks very easy. So you'll see that in our case, it was actually $722 collected and only $702 was deposited. But we all know that at a craft fair, you know, sometimes we dip into the cash drawer and we take out a little money for lunch or whatever. So we're going to account for that little missing cash 
separately. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add this. And what this is going to do is it's going to put those sales on the balance sheet as payments to deposit. And on the bank side, here's our deposit. What I have found is it doesn't want me to just categorize, like I'll, I'll show you the error message that it gives me. My natural inclination is, okay, I'm, now I'm going to put this amount as payments to deposit. It'll be the other direction and it'll reflect the actual deposit. So I want to click add. And then QuickBooks gives me an error, select a bank account for this deposit, which makes no sense because the bank account is already selected. I'm in the banking tab for uncategorized transactions in their business checking. It makes no sense. So the workaround I found is if I do record as transfer and then I do payments to deposit, it let me do it. Like I said, it makes absolutely no sense, but there you have it. So let's take a look at that on the balance sheet. Okay, I ran our balance sheet as of November 30th. And next I'm gonna click on this payments to deposit account so you can see that in and out. Here we have the detail of payments to deposit. And you can see here's that 722 that we put from Square and the 702 that actually was deposited. And a couple of these deposits were precise in and out, but we had another transaction as well where 1258 was collected and only 1252.48 was deposited. So we've got a difference of at the end of the month of 76.87. So the way we're gonna handle this, I you could do this on a per transaction basis, adjusting for those cash cash withdrawals, but instead I'm going to do this on a monthly basis. So the way I'm going to handle this on a monthly basis is just to record a journal entry. I'm going to set my date to the end of the month. I'm going to select my payment to deposit account. It has a debit balance and I'm going to reduce that. Now I'm going to do a description cash use for personal. Okay, and then the other side of that entry is going to be owner's pay and save and close. Now when this account refreshes, we have zero payments to deposit and we've accounted for the fact that we use some of that money for personal reasons. So there you have it. That's how we're gonna handle those cash deposits. Let's take a look now at how all of this looks on the profit and loss report so you can see the square sales and fees reflected there. Oh, before I do that though, I wanted to mention that it is recording our sales tax payable. It looks like in this case, it's recording it to this particular sales tax payable account, but depending on your settings, the account may be labeled differently. But that's what we want when we are trying to record our sales data, regardless of platform, we want gross sales, we want refunds, we want fees, and we want sales tax. Those are kind of like the main things that we need broken out, and the Connect to Square app is doing that. So let's take a look at the P&L. Okay, here's a P&L. We don't have everything else categorized, but you can see the breakout of the square sales and refunds as well as the square fees, which is exactly what we want to see. So overall, Connect to Square has been a great integration to use with QuickBooks Online and the Square credit card reader. And I should also say it's a free integration. So it's easy, it works, and it's free. So what's not to love? I hope you have found this video helpful and I hope you make lots of in-person sales with your Square Reader and that the you find this video on how the connection to QuickBooks works helpful. If this has been helpful to you, I would so appreciate your like and your subscribe. Have a great day.